any Oakland story begins at Lake Merritt, even a story of its housing. For Lake Merritt symbolizes the good living of Oakland. This was not always true, for Lake Merritt was once a swamp. But Oakland had the courage to dream and to plan. And by a program of conservation and correction, the swamp became the pride of the city, a fine recreational center and wildlife refuge. Far-sighted planning made Oakland a major seaport, serving over 50 steamship lines. Oakland pioneered the Bay Area's first major air terminal, serving the nation and the world, and more improvements are on the way. And Oakland is a city of beautiful homes and views, a fine place for living, working, and raising children. But in Oakland's future, as in all larger cities, there is an internal threat, the cancer of housing decay. Almost in the shadow of the city hall, can be found the end result of this disease, the slum. Yes, this too is Oakland. Many of her dwellings look and are malignant, threatening the vitality of the entire community. The last federal census revealed that of Oakland's 131,000 housing units, over 15,000 were substandard. Over 3,500 were unfit for repair. Some houses were unlisted by the city and were illegally constructed. The slum does not just happen. War, depression, public apathy, inadequate laws and personnel, and other complex factors combine to create the slum. Whatever the causes, such conditions take a heavy toll in human values and vitality. Public health nurses are quick to observe substandard conditions. Faulty wiring creating danger of fire. Crowding and inadequate ventilation imperiling health and safety. Weakening the fiber of the affected dweller. Basement quarters are damp, improperly ventilated, contrary to health standards. They are depressing and invite disease. Some Oakland houses have inadequate and decrepit plumbing, dangerous to health. Some have no inside sanitary facilities. Every form of housing decay is found in the slum. Rickety railings or steps, faulty plumbing, unvented stoves, poor lighting, many families jammed into single family units. All of these, when concentrated, spell slum. Such conditions destroy neighborhoods, for no incentive remains to stimulate neighborhood pride or spirit. Decay and filth take over. But the decay is not self-contained. Like a cancer, it feeds upon and drains the economy and vitality of the entire city. Slums are a costly breeding ground for crime, juvenile delinquency, fire, and disease. The taxpayers in the good areas of the city pay for the slum. Decay of moral and spiritual values cannot be measured in dollars and cents but taxes can. 35% of the population lives in substandard housing. They provide only 6% of local taxes. They consume about one half of every local tax dollar. To break it down, slums account for the following. 35% of the fires, 45% of the major crimes, 55% of juvenile delinquency, 50% of arrests, a major portion of public health and hospital costs, for example, 60% of the TB victims alone. Oakland City Council has acted. It has adopted a program of conservation and rehabilitation of neighborhoods to prevent the spread of deterioration. The program is supported by an active, active Citizens Committee for Urban Renewal and other civic groups. It is a community program based upon free enterprise, cooperation, and the upgrading of older neighborhoods, which if let go are doomed to decay. The council selected the Clinton Park neighborhood as the first project area. A remodeled old house was moved onto city property in the area to serve as project headquarters. Clinton Park 
is a high-value area of fine old homes, but there is spot blight foretelling general deterioration. Once fine structures, some old houses, now crowded with many families, show lack of proper maintenance. Such neglect breeds neglect. Yet attractive bungalows indicate confidence and pride in home. But nearby neglect depresses all values. In some of the older houses of similar age and style, owners have made substantial improvements. But collective upgrading is needed to really benefit the entire neighborhood. If improvements are made in compliance with proper standards, every owner and every occupant gains. The tenant gets higher living standards, inspiration to better housekeeping, and an improved neighborhood environment. The owner, higher values. Clinton Park is a convenient area. It can accommodate a large, proud population. It has modern apartment buildings, new in the midst of old. This construction is a shot in the arm to an old neighborhood. It stimulates property values. The mixture of the old and new, of attractive and unsightly, is a pattern characterizing Clinton Park. The project area was wisely chosen. It contains over 1,200 structures. Half are owner-occupied. The 1950 federal census showed a large percentage of the dwelling units substandard. Many were recorded as having no private bath or as being dilapidated. But Clinton Park is not a slum. Conditions are threatening, and without upgrading, the area will deteriorate rapidly. But it is the first project area because it can become a proud example for other Oakland neighborhoods in checking creeping decay. Slum beginnings are found in the project area. Frontages often look presentable, but interiors and backyards are the telltale of approaching blight. Basement apartments in Clinton Park often repeat the conditions found in real slums, but Oakland's rehabilitation and conservation program can stop these slum beginnings. Such a program requires adequate city ordinances and proper enforcement. In operation, it means neighborhood-wide compliance with accepted standards for the American way of life. The citizen who takes pride in home and maintains proper standards is thus assured his neighbor must do likewise. The city council long realized the need for action and appointed a full-time urban renewal coordinator to administer the program. City officials and department heads have worked together to assure steady progress and proper planning for Oakland's rejuvenated future. The first nail was driven when construction started on the new Franklin Elementary School at 9th Avenue and Foothill Boulevard. Franklin School is a pioneering example of cooperation between the city government, the Board of Education, and the neighborhood in creating a new facility. The old portables at Franklin School are a thing of the past. The children of Clinton Park now enjoy a new school with adequate park and recreational facilities. Public improvements of many kind can be a part of the city's support of better living in the area. Urban renewal started at the citizen level when homeowners voluntarily improved dwellings. This required a judgment by the owner as to whether the structure could be brought economically up to proper housing standards. The urban renewal representative, the contractor, and the nonprofit Oakland Renewal Foundation all may aid the homeowner in guarding against unnecessary and wasteful improvements which may not meet requirements. New construction in the area is also urban renewal in action. High housing standards and freshened neighborhoods mean better living and a better environment for families, children, and future generations. Urban renewal is a program for all of Oakland. It can and it will revitalize our city's life and values. Oakland's rich heritage a heritage of beauty, of good living, 
can prevail through community endeavor and cooperation. A city, after all, is more than public buildings, beautiful plazas, wide streets and traffic. A city is the manifestation of the needs of people. The challenge is the fulfilling of human needs and values. Our story ends as it began with Lake Merritt. Lake Merritt is living proof that the city's bold and imaginative program can work in the Oakland tradition. Urban renewal can bring a new birth for our city, Oakland.